Welcome to Warriors and Bards, a show where we take a look at the many warriors, mystics, and heroes throughout the land and compare them to their franchise counterpart. Today's episode, Ma Chao and the Spear of Justice. We all know Ma Chao is the righteous warrior of justice from games such as Dynasty Warriors and Warriors of Orochi. With his trusty spear, he pierces evil like no other. However, is the warrior of justice really who we are led to believe he is? Ma Chao is the son of Ma Tung, and an unknown mother. History never recorded this because history is dumb. Ma Tung, during the era before Dong Zhua was the ruler of the lands of Liang, which was before he lost it to Dong Zhua. Finally, after what would be a short period, he would lose it to Han Sui. Han Sui became Ma Chao's adoptive father after Cao Cao sent men to attack the lands of Liang, killing Lady Yang in the process. Ma Chao's first wife. Now you can probably figure out why in Dynasty Warriors, Cao Cao and Ma Chao do not get along under most conditions. Later, Lady Dong would become a member of Ma Chao's concubine and would be left by Ma Chao at Hong Zhong and captured by Cao Cao, whom would marry her off to Yan Pu. Wow. You married this woman to a guy named Pu from a guy named Ma. So she just went from a Ma to Pu. Well, at least we know she's now a Ma Pu. Ma Chao was the ruler of Liang as the ruling prefect under Liu Bei, the ruler of Shu. Living in the land of Han Zhong, Ma Chao refused to leave the land of Liang despite the promotion offered. Ma Chao's remaining family, however, left to the land of Yi, all of which led aristocratic lives. Both of Ma Chao's brothers were given positions of authority within the military of the land from their new residency. Ma Chao, between reality and franchise, shared the use of a spear and family history. To prepare for the Battle of Tong Pass, which Ma Chao sensed before occurring by noticing Cao Cao's scout. Upon learning this, Ma Chao went to Han Sui and asked to become his adoptive son. For this, Ma Chao was despised by many of Han Sui's men, and after the Battle of Tong Pass, which was won by Han Sui's forces, Jia Shu would plant seeds of distrust between Sui and Chao. Ultimately, Ma Chao would be banished from Liang when Cao Cao would take his window of attack. Seriously? You left him this window just to just come into your house? No, that's not actually what happened. There was this huge flaw in Ma Chao's plan where he was able to take advantage of and just kind of like, BOM RUSH! And basically took the victory from behind and Han Zui was Ma Chao participated in the Battle of Chengdu, which is after he was recruited by Liu Bei. Where in history, he had sent a letter to Liu Bei telling of his defection ahead of time. He would run amok against the current Shu forces. The game, however, portrays Ma Chao as realizing that Liu Bei is a man of virtue and worthy to be served. The major thing that needs to be said is Ma Chao sent a letter to Liu Bei saying, hey, I want to defect and kill everybody on my side. Here, just send me a few of your troops. And Liu Bei was more than happy to oblige. I have a feeling that it was actually Pong Tong's idea. But then again, that might be my Dynasty Warrior senses kicking in. Many who knew Ma Chao during his time referred to him as arrogant for joining the side he believed to be the worthy victor. Become the son of another lord, abandoning his own father, and referring to his savior by his martial name. In the game Dynasty Warriors, Ma Chao is often depicted as stubborn and headstrong, preferring the side of justice, making him much more of a leaf in the wind rather than arrogant and profound as his real-life counterpart. Ma Chao's character in the game is often filled with the desire for revenge. Though, not as much as Wang Yi, he still goes out of his way to defeat those he sees as evil, such as when he attacks Cao Cao in Warriors of Ochi 3. However, his character is not consumed by hate, 
as he is still capable of seeing the bigger picture. For this part of the analysis, we take a look at the game or franchise that which Mon Chao is from. The only one that I was able to find during my research was Dynasty Warriors. Mostly because there aren't really a whole lot of games that reflect the Three Kingdoms era other than Tecmo Koei. Tecmo Koei, the creator of the Dynasty Warriors, also created multiple other Dynasty based games such as a simulator, a turn based tactics, as well as Dynasty Tactics, along with the Hack and Slash series, Dynasty Warriors as we know it today, the fighting game, Dynasty Warriors 1, and even the Warriors Orochi series, as well as a few other spin-offs where Ma Chao is known to make a couple of appearances. For the closing thoughts of this argument, Ma Chao and Ma Chao as a franchise are very similar in character. However, Ma Chao, the historical figure, was much more of a attention seeker an often much more stubborn person. He knew what he wanted, and he even achieved his goal of becoming the prefects of Leong. However, this did not stop Ma Chao from making a number of mistakes, such as the dinner with Liu Bei, where he quickly learned not to use Liu Bei's martial name as he was later threatened by Zhang Fei and Guan Yu after the dinner. Finally, as a franchise, Ma Chao is considered often to be a seeker of justice. And while most portrayals are relatively decent, I have to say that the Warrior Orochi view of this is much more to the point. When Ma Chao reaches Cao Cao, in Warriors of Orochi 3, you can really tell how much he wants to do everything in his power to get his revenge. But the issue with the franchise of Dynasty Warriors, they never explain why Ma Chao is the way he is. To find this out, you must read the encyclopedia of Dynasty Warriors, any of them. And as this is supposed to be an educational show, I implore you to do so anyway. Though, as for many people who hate school, you probably won't. So, this has been Turn Away 40, and that was my closing argument.